Welcome to part four of lecture 17 of aerospace propulsion. So we left off with this question of um, if I have two stages um, or a single stage to get to a given overall, uh, overall pressure ratio and all the stages have the same efficiency, which machine is overall more efficient? Basically, if we break our compression into the steps, it kind of elucidates the difference here and we can get to the answer. The two-stage compression is less efficient if all the stages have the same isentropic efficiency. And the reason for this is that the temperature at the start of the second stage, right? So here we start from the same conditions, and here's the two-stage process, and here's the single-stage process. The temperature at the start of the second stage is higher than at the beginning of uh, a single big stage, um, meaning that the temperature rise in the, se in the second stage is even larger than, than the first one because of the diverging P equals constant lines. Another way to easily see that this is more efficient uh, with the single stage is that the overall entropy rise um, is less for the single stage machine than it is for the two stage machine. Now the efficiencies will converge as the number of stages increases. If I've got a multi-stage machine with a large number of stages, the stage polytropic and isentropic efficiencies get closer and closer together. And that's because each stage's pressure ratio becomes relatively small. So for example, if I've got a 10-stage compressor with a stage pressure ratio of 1.3 and a stage polytropic efficiency of 0.9, the machine's overall pressure ratio will be 13.8, and the stage isentropic efficiency will point, be 0.896, almost the same as the polytropic efficiency. But the overall efficiencies are quite different. The polytropic efficiency, again, is still just 0.9, whereas the isentropic efficiency of the overall machine is 86%, so a 4% difference. So it does matter which one you consider. Another thing that can sometimes be useful to do is to recast uh, our compressor non-dimensional mass flow in different terms. Um, normally, when we make compressor characteristics, we won't re make these plots of, against uh, non-dimensional mass flow uh, based on the inlet condition. So for a core compressor, that would be sort of M bar at stage, uh, or at point uh, two three, station two three. But an alternative approach is to present it in terms of the outlet stagnation pressure and temperature, uh, M, M bar three, uh, right, is the associated non-dimensional mass flow based on, on T naught three and P naught three. And we can relate this to what's going on um, and we do that by looking at the variations in the properties, which has to do with the efficiencies, of course. Um, but we can get the relationship that m bar 3 is equal to m bar 2, 3 times basically the pressure ratio to some exponent L and times an area ratio uh, across the component of the flow areas. And L is, has to do with the gamma and the efficiencies. Um, and let's say that the polytropic efficiency is uh, 90% and gamma is 1.4, then this L is about 0.84. So it's not exactly linear, but um, it's pretty close to linear, right? This, this exponent's close to one. So the mass flow ratio is, is almost proportional to the pressure ratio. So the outlet non-dimensional mass flow can, mass flow can be the same at different rotational speeds since it's proportional, roughly, to the pressure ratio. Now, keep in mind that in reality, the polytropic efficiency typically changes with rotational speed and in general also with pressure ratio due to variations in incidence. Um, so identifying the points at which the non-dimensional mass flow uh, outlet is, are equal for different speeds is actually a pretty non-trivial thing to do. The other thing uh, that is important to realize when we get to high pressure ratio compressors is that avoiding stall and surge becomes more and more challenging. Um, earlier, we mentioned that variable stators were needed to have multi-stage compressors with, with pressure ratios more than, say, about seven. Um, and under these conditions, different stages in the single machine can operate under very different local operating conditions um, at the same time during off-design operation. And it's common that the front stages will be close to stall while the back stage of a multi-stage machine is choked. To try to see how this can be, Let's look at the stage flow coefficients variation off design. 
So here, let's consider uh, a compressor, and it may be multi-stage, but we'll just look at the first stage, the middle stage, and the last stage. And when a stage is operating off design, essentially its output density is different from that that would have been assumed in the sizing of the flow path cross-sectional area. So if I've got reduced density due to a lower pressure rise, um, or sorry, I get reduced density due to a lower pressure rise caused by a rotational speed reduction, the result is that I end up with a higher axial velocity for a downstream stage, and that effect compounds for each stage of the machine. So here is a uh, compressor characteristic notionally. Here's the, the Stoller surge line, and here's the working line, uh, and we've got three points A, B, and C, and then also a point D, which is sort of on this line of maybe design constant speed uh, uh, up near the stall point. Um, and here is a sort of non-dimensional pressurized characteristic versus flow coefficient characteristic for each uh, stage. And these are sort of the characteristics that are roughly independent of rotational speed, especially for a lower speed machine. And what we see is that, okay, at, at, uh, the, for the first stage, or sorry, at point A, we're essentially at the same point for all three stages. So that's basically the design point. Then if we move down the working line to point B, the first stage um, is operating higher on its local characteristic. Um, so it's got sort of more pressurized and less, of course, less mass flow. But now we get that issue where we're going to get a speed up in the uh, rotation, in the axial velocity because of the uh, less than expected density rise. So uh, now, uh, maybe stage, the middle stage is operating still roughly at the design point, but if we go down to the last stage, um, now we're operating sort of past design in terms of flow and getting closer to choke. And as we move down further to C, the same thing happens, but it gets even worse. C is now sort of at the limit of stability of the first stage because this is sort of before this gets to positive slope where it's going to be unstable. And uh, so we probably are going into stall on this first stage. The middle stage somewhere is probably still close to design and the last stage is now over at choke. Similarly, if we do lines of constant, or movement in constant rotational speed and move from the design point up to D uh, by uh, sort of restricting the flow rate, um, we get a, a small decrease in, er, in mass flow and a big in and an increase in pressure rise for the first stage, um, a little bit more change for the second stage, and a bigger change for the last stage. So here, we can be in a condition where um, it, it'll be the last stage that's going to go into stall. So moving on lines of constant speed, it'll sort of be the last stage that goes into stall first. Moving on the working line, it'll be the first stage that goes into stall first, with the last stage is going towards choke. So this is sort of can be complicated to keep track of in reality, but this is important to understand for trying to set the operating limits of true multi-stage compressors. Right, and so once that last stage eventually chokes, uh, then the mass flow of the whole compressor is constrained and it leads to further restrictions in flow coefficient at the inlet. Um, and so the overall effect is that moving down the working line moves the front stage towards stall or surge and the last stage towards choke, but the middle stages are relatively unaffected. To try to overcome these limits in off-design operation, um, there are a few things that we can do. Right? We, we, as stated before, we can use variable stators, um, and this can in, uh, increase the maximum practical compressor ratio, compressor pressure ratio from about 7 to maybe about 20. And for the front stages, um, at low rotational speed, the stators increase the tangential velocity in the direction of rotor rotation, which reduces rotor incidence and unstalls those front stages. At variable, very low speeds, even the variable stators are insufficient. And the solution then is to bleed off air from the middle stages towards the bypass duct. Basically, this allows uh, for increased flow in the front stages and moves them away from stall, while it decreases the flow in the rear stages and then chokes them. Obviously, this is terrible for the efficiency of the cycle, and you don't want to ever operate long term in these conditions. But this is very important for getting through transient operating points, such as the startup process of the engine. You may also need to do this sort of thing when the engine is close to idling. Um, during descent, for example. So that's about all we have to say about uh, nozzles, fans, and compressors. In the next lecture, we'll look at component characteristics for turbines.